So let's get down to what God has placed in my heart to share with you this evening. And the topic is soaring is not boring. Soaring is not boring. The word so, if you take the word so, it means ascending rapidly above usual levels and increasing and intensify the meaning of so sowing means to ascend rapidly above a usual level increase and intensify reaching great heights i believe that you know that i was a pilot in the air force and one of the greatest greatest experiences apart from being born again and being married <laughs> one of the best experiences that i had was the day when i flew the aircraft by myself for the very first time it is an amazing amazing experience the sky the aircraft and you that you cannot explain the beauty when you just take off from that runway and when you pull that joystick back and you just go high it's an amazing feeling not the same when you're coming down <laughs> because from reciting gatha to asking god god please help me please help me please help me please help me the landing is the most difficult thing taking off is a beautiful thing so as a pilot one thing that i really enjoyed was when i go up there it's not like driving to to office office when there is no traffic is just a 5 minute drive but in traffic it is a 1 hour drive in the sky there is no traffic there is traffic but when you go to the sky you have nobody is cutting across there are no three wheelers in the sky <laughs> and it's a clear clear cut it's a beautiful beautiful experience and you know every time a aircraft takes off it takes off against the wind a aircraft takes off against the wind and it is not the engines that make the aircraft go up it is the wings the engines give power but the wings lift you up in a aircraft because that is aerodynamics so as you power through when you reach a certain speed and when you pull your wings determine how much you go high and there is one beautiful thing because people think that it's the power of the engines that keep a aircraft yes it keeps it going but the higher the aircraft goes 15 to 20 times the height you can glide without any power So when you are at a higher altitude the the opportunity of crashing is very very little but when you are flying at a lower level it is very very possible because of the obstacles that you may face if you have gone in a aircraft you will know that when you are flying at 40000 feet the captain tells you you can remove your seat belts you can go to the toilet you can walk about but when the aircraft is on the ground they are saying to keep the seat belts on when it's taxi still the aircraft is on the ground but there is a seat belt there is a lot of precautions that are taken when the aircraft is on the ground and when it's taking off and when it's ascending still it says keep your seat belts on but as soon as you are cruising 
at an altitude of 40,000 feet, the sign to take off and relax is there. Have you ever wondered why? Why is precaution taken at a lower level, but precautions not taken at a higher level? Because at that level, the probability of encountering anything, any kind of danger is very, very remote. And when you're flying an aircraft, you pull the joystick and you take off. And then you have to adjust your climbing, you have to get instructions. And you, you keep on climbing, you have to turn, you have to get into the right direction. But as soon as you climb to a cruising level of say about 40,000 feet, and when the tower tells you your direction is this, you quickly align yourself into that path and you trim your, trim your aircraft. And when you trim your aircraft, the aircraft flies by itself. There is very little effort from the pilot that takes place at that level. But when you're ascending, when you're on the ground and when you're taking off, there is a lot of intervention that takes place. So flying is a beautiful, beautiful experience. And it is not by accident, I believe, that Isaiah chapter 40, verse number 27 onwards says, Why said thou, O Jacob, and speaketh, O Israel, my ways are hid from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over from my God? Had thou not known, had thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the world, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He gives power to the faint and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young man shall utterly fail. My focus is verse number 31. But they that wait, wait, that is the most important. The word wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They will walk and they will not faint. I want you to focus on this verse, verse number 31. And the fact that says, they that wait upon the Lord. It is they that wait upon the Lord that, she, that will be renewed in their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not be weary. They will walk and not faint. See, immediately you wonder why God is comparing you to an eagle. Why is God con quickly connecting you to an eagle? Because I believe the eagle, it's not what I believe, it is also a proven fact that the eagle is a majestic bird. The eagle is a majestic bird. And majestic is glory. Majestic is glory. So you must know, even in Psalm 100 and 100, 103 verse number 5, it says, your youth will be renewed like an eagle. So God is connecting us as children of his, as Christians, to be like eagles. So I questioned and I was doing a little bit of research as to why God in his wisdom has called us to be like eagles. The first thing that I thought, that I, that I learned is that eagles always create their nests on mountaintops. They build their nests on mountaintops. They are always flying at high altitude. They don't come to low altitudes much, but they are constantly flying at high altitudes. They catch the wind. That is why you will see the eagle always not flapping, but he's soaring. He catches the wind. He identifies that height and he goes and he covers much distance. The barriers that he faces is very little. And if he sets his eyes on something, he always ensures that he gets it. 
he does not feed on carcasses every time an eagle eats he eats fresh meat he does not eat dead things he is very concerned about his longevity he takes care of himself he has amazing amazing vision he takes up and he takes his prey with ease he looks at it he goes down he picks it up and he goes up he doesn't hang around on the ground eating his prey he takes it back to his highest place before he enjoys it and most of all he is the king of the sky the golden e eagle is known as the king of the sky so god wants us to be like eagles but unfortunately most christians are not eagles but they are beagles <laughs> beagles always have big noses they are sniffing into other people's affairs they have big ears always flapping always with a moist nose looking at other people's business some others are like peacocks they like to display their christianity they will carry the largest bible they will quote scriptures like nobody's business but they are only on the ground displaying they never very rarely will you see peacocks do fly but it's very rare that you see peacocks fly because they like to show off see god has created us to have a mountain top experience but we are in the valley and also eating valley <laughs> when god has prepared for us a mountain top experience see i i i firmly believe that we cannot struggle in life as a christian we cannot struggle in life we cannot have hand to mouth existence that is not a possibility when we are christ when we are a christian we are constantly most of us if you look at our churches most of us are depending on somebody else's prayer to carry them through in life you have been called to be the light of the world you have to be you have been called to be on top of a city on a mountain top a city on a hill you are not alone you are a city you are not alone you are the light of the world but most christians anunge paaning eliye balana so we are depending on somebody else's prayer somebody else's revelation and somebody else's speaking into our lives for us to progress in life and that is why we are constantly in a valley that is why we don't see people making progress don't think i am rude in saying this when god created man he did not put his image on a loser nor a failure he did not do that i am not trying to say anything but i'm making only a statement please hear me out but he created a man that would dominate he created a man that would dominate and the first thing when god created man he the instructions that god gave man was be fruitful that is be rich he said multiply that means increase he said replenish the earth that means through the excess reinvest it and subdue it control it through the authority that is given to you you have a problem with what i said of being rich of increasing of reinvesting and having control over everything please speak to god because that is what is said in genesis chapter 1 verse number 28 so why are we christians 
suffering why do we struggle to get off the ground why is it that we are finding it difficult to go through one single day when god has said i have come to give you life and life in its abundance why are we saying abundance neve podda ounce at least an ounce give me when god has promised you abundance see for most of us i would i would like to say most of the most people because if i say most of us i also put myself into that situation are in a roller coaster ride one day you are in the top of the world and the next day you are below the earth there is no consistency in your life it's an absolute roller coaster today you will say if you ask some people i'm on the top of the world pastor next day you ask him he say i'm below the earth pastor the thing is why we struggle is found in isaiah chapter 55 verse 8 and 9 my thoughts this is the lord speaking my thoughts are not your thoughts no other ways my ways and god is comparing that he's saying your ways are not like my ways your thoughts are not my thoughts and he's comparing it with the heavens as far as the heavens are from the earth that is the distance that my ways and my thoughts are so you must know that when jesus when lord took the form of a man and came down to this earth jesus he came and he laid his life for us he laid his life for us so that we who were sin jesus took that sin upon him and he became sin who knew no sin that we can be the righteousness of god and he came down from heaven to do that for us and then he ascended to heaven and he called us to reign with him in heavenly places he has called us to reign with him in heavenly places the problem is to reign with him in heavenly places we must know his ways we must know his thoughts if we don't know his ways and if we don't know his thoughts we will fail and it is our responsibility and it is our earnest desire to have a greater knowledge of god because when we have a greater knowledge of god we will know his ways and we will know his thoughts and then we will ascend into the place where god has called us to reign with him in heavenly places so if you are not seated with him in heavenly places tonight is your night say change is coming change is coming i am ascending i am going to so sorry is not boring that's what our heart cry should be because see the god kind of love, life is not a boring life think people think that life comes to an end the day jesus comes into our life jesus said it's finished he didn't says you are finished everything that god has prepared for us is in christ and when we receive christ into our lives our lives can never be the same again that is why i find it very difficult to understand why people constantly 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 have a problem every day meeting after meeting please come after the service we will still pray for you but meeting after meeting same people encountering the same problem it cannot happen it has to stop at least from tonight it has to stop there has to be an end because we have been called to reign and you cannot be reigning with headaches colds sore throats cancer you cannot reign when we reign with god the life is beyond what you can even think or expect so i told you the important word that we have to focus on is wait 
The word weight comes from a Hebrew word called kava, which means binding together, eagerly awaiting the idea of working together, which is essential for positive and lasting change. So the word weight there means kava. It is binding together, eagerly awaiting. And the idea of working together, which is essential for a positive and lasting change. That's what waiting is. So how do we wait on the Lord? How do we have a greater knowledge of God? If we are going to know his ways, if we are going to know his thoughts, then we must have a greater knowledge of him. When God created man, he created him as an eternal spiritual being. Death was present, but it was not activated. That is why God said to Adam, the tree of knowledge of good and evil shall thou not eat of. The day you eat, you will surely die. So Adam and Eve or Eve and Adam got together and consumed from the tree of knowledge and immediately their eyes were open. What eyes do you think were open? Spiritual eyes or physical eyes? Sorry? <laughs> I didn't ask that. I asked physical or spiritual, not That's Their physical eyes were open because immediately they saw their nakedness. Although there was no cessation or a separation from life per se, in the physical body, there was a separation that took in the spirit. That is why immediately when their eyes were opened, when they knew that they were naked, they hid themselves. That's why they hid themselves. And immediately there was a gap that was created between God and man. But God proclaims they are immediately that a life that he intended for his creation, which was in man, a life of increase, a life of multiplication, a life of wholeness, a life that was rich, a life that they should replenish, a life that they should subdue, all of a sudden turned to a life of sorrow, a life of death. A life of suffering, a life of pain, because they, are, they had a spiritual death. Immediately, we see a separation that takes place between God and between man. And that separation was reconciled the day. God gave his only begotten son to us. The reconciliation process began when he gave us his only begotten son. John 1 verse number 14 says that Jesus is known as the only begotten son of the father. But he is known in Revelation chapter 1 verse number 5 as the first begotten of the dead. That is the day that God was reconciled with man or man was reconciled with God. The day he arose and, he, and that was the day that he became. And we in Romans chapter, uh, chapter 8 verse 11 says that the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives inside of us. So when we receive Jesus, into our lives. The first thing that happens is that we are spiritually, spiritually born again. 
because god created us to ascend when he when he arose from the dead he went up to a heavenly place and he called us to be with him and that is why we as his children are called to ascend into heavenly places and unless we are born again we are born again in our spirit and when we are born again it is not that is chosen by a man it is not a biological birth it's a spiritual birth when we receive jesus into our life in john chapter 3 verse number 3 jesus tells nicodemus unless you are born from above you will not see the kingdom of god you will not see the kingdom of god the day that we are born again when our spiritual eyes are open we see the kingdom dynamics a aircraft goes up because of aerodynamics but when we receive jesus into our lives it becomes kingdom dynamics the whole level your altitude just changes and you are called to arise and ascend so that you can bring glory to jesus this is also evident when in the new testament when paul encountered jesus on the road to damascus when he when he had this encounter he falls onto the ground and when he falls onto the ground the voice speaks the lord's voice speaks and ask him why are you persecuting me and he says lord and he says long story he tells paul that i will give you instructions but the bible says that his eyes were open but he saw no man his eyes were open but he did not see any man and i would like to place before you that the eyes that were open at that time through the encounter that paul had with god was his spiritual eyes because he told him you go to damascus and i will tell you what needs to be done a man who persecuted god's people like nobody's business gets instructions has a vision that a man called ananias is going to come and pray for him that he will receive physical sight all that happened because his spiritual eyes were open and god showed him everything that he was going to do because he told ananias i am he's a chosen vessel and he will have to suffer much before gentiles and before kings and all those things was spoken that is why when ananias went and placed his hands and the bible says that the scales fell the scales that fell the revelation that i have received of the scales that fell was the scales of the law that he knew very well of and his eyes were open to the grace of god because if not in the word of god says immediately he started preaching the word of god so where did he get the revelation from a person who persecuted the christians to come and all of a sudden tell people of the goodness of god he has to have a revelation of god he has to increase in wisdom to know who god is what god ways are what are god's thoughts and that through the revelation that he received was able to convince that the god that he had con- convicted or the god that he was persecuting is the g- same god who can bring victory into their lives Amen. so uh, the spiritual eyes have to be open our spiritual eyes are open but it's just that we don't set our spiritual eyes on things that we should be setting our eyes on colossians 3 verse number 1 says that if you are risen with christ seek the things that are of above if then you have been raised with christ to a new life thus sharing his resurrection from the dead aim and seek riches eternal treasures that are from above 
where Christ is seated at the right hand of God and set your mind. First he says to seek things and then he says set your mind and keep them set on what is above, not on the things that are of the earth. So there is a, the spiritual eyes that need to seek the things from above and also you have to set your mind on things that of, are of, from above. Because, see, fixing our eyes and seeking is our responsibility. He has opened our spiritual eyes the day we gave our lives to Jesus. But it is our responsibility to increase in that knowledge by knowing and ascending into spiritual dimensions that God has called us to be in. So the million dollar question is, how do I ascend spiritual dimensions? All of you, as the father of this house, I am requesting you to get the CD series part, I believe 18 has been completed, Ascending Spiritual Dimensions, Preach, preached by the prophet of God, absolutely important. You want to soar with wings like eagles, you need to know how you ascend spiritual dimensions. I will just cover a few points that Prophet Jerome has already shared because this is important. We as a church, as the mother church, have to ascend to levels that we will be a trophy that others will look and say, wow, this is amazing. See what the Lord is doing through this church, through these people. We will not be a church that will extend our hand. We will not be a church that depends on giving, but we will live through our giving. You and I must know that we have to increase. We have to ascend. We have to be rich. We have to be prosperous. We have to be a church that when people see us, they should, they should be wondering, what, what on earth is happening with these people? You don't, see, everybody thinks that you need to uh, go and preach the gospel and all that. Yes, that's important. But you are your best advertisement. You can preach to the whole world. But if your life is not a reflection of who Jesus is, what's the whole use? You will just only be a speaker. Only a sound. But not a symbol of his goodness. Ephesians chapter 1 verse number 15 to 17. Can we have that on the screen? Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and the love unto all saints. Wait. The first level is faith. The first level is faith. Faith comes the day we accept Jesus as our personal savior. The message of Christ brings with it an element of faith. Faith also comes from hearing the word of God. Faith also is a gift that is of the Holy Spirit. So faith is the first level that you need to pass because faith enables you to receive Christ into your life. So faith is your first level of ascension. The second level of ascension is love. See, you can tell the entire world about Jesus and if you don't have an ounce of love, it's useless. Prophet Jerome said, you, why your husband is not or your wife is not coming to church is because you are only preaching to the man. You are telling that his faith has to increase, that he has to learn the word of God, but you are not even giving him a cup of tea. So in the morning, you will prepare the tea, Keep and say, Inda, Bipa. <laughs> and before that you are praying. After that you are praying. But, but how? Your level of love. Because when we receive Jesus into our life, the very DNA of God is love. God is love. And when we receive Jesus into our life, Immediately, 
love has to just flow out of our lives why is love greater than faith first corinthians 13 13 faith hope and love the greatest of it is love so you can have a level of faith but there is also a level of love and that love is agape love unconditional love that you must have when you have this you are you have gone to your second level now verse number 17 uh ephesians chapter 1 verse number six, uh 15 is that 16 go on to 16 She is not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. See, when when Paul knew that the church had faith and then love, then he started praying for it. He started praying for it, and he go to the next verse number seventeen. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom. which is you and i know is sophia and revelation what's the word apocalypse is the word sophia is for wisdom and for revelation it is apocalypse revelation in the knowledge of him that the god of our lord jesus christ the father of glory may give you unto you a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him so the third level is wisdom the spirit of sophia the spirit of wisdom the spirit of wisdom which is called sophia is insight into reality insight into reality it is a practical way a pragmatic way a skillful way of dealing with issues and it is also the ways of god the ways of god is known through the wisdom that he he dispenses into your life in the form of sophia the ways of god that is why people are always depending when you have sophia you will never depend on other people's prayer because now you are waiting for the answer but when you have sophia you are not waiting for the answer you know how the answer is going to come and based on the 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 sophia that you have on the way the answer is coming you align yourselves so faith love wisdom and then comes revelation which is apocalypse which is an unveiling a disclosure of that which is hidden this is the revelation that comes from god the things of the lord are hidden you and i must know that the things of the lord are hidden his best is hidden if you think that i'm saying something incorrect First Corinthians two verse nine and ten says, "Our eyes have not seen, our ears have not heard, our heart and our mind will not be able to comprehend what He has prepared for them that love Him." So He is talking about the senses that we are having, and our senses will not be able to comprehend what He has prepared for us. But it is if you go to verse number ten, it says. but god had revealed them unto us by his spirit for the spirit searches all things yea the deeper things of god so the holy spirit that works in us searches the things of god and through the revelation and the sophia that we get we will definitely definitely have what is known as epignosis or the knowledge of god epignosis is the full recognition disclosure of who god is to an extent that you and him become one that is epignosis so he, so prophet jerome gave us an equation sophia plus apocalypse equals epignosis reality plus revelation 
gives us recognition. So you must know the importance of ascending and these are the levels of ascending. The first level is faith. Second one is love. Third one is wisdom. Fourth one is revelation. Fifth one is knowledge. See, when you have all of these, verse number, let's go to verse number 18 now in First Ephesians 1, verse number 18 and 19. See, but what happens? The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. So the first thing that happens is that the eyes of your understanding is enlightened. When we have epignosis, when we have a greater knowledge of who our God is, we will see things and we will know God's way in doing things. I didn't know this then because I was not who I am. Several years back, when I was, I had just finished playing my rugby and there was a vacuum in my life and I wanted to go to England to do my masters. And our kids were extremely small, two and I think two and three, uh, two and four. Uh, they have not got into school and I applied to uh, the UK for a visa. To go there to study, I didn't know how I was going to pay for the school because I didn't have money. We just had a car, we were trying to sell the car and then uh, do something like that. I was going to earn some money and my visa got rejected. And I said, God, you're an unreasonable God, you close the door. And I remember coming back, I was cursing God when I was coming back home. Four years later, I go to the UK, I pay for my school fees up front, up front, school fees paid. Not only I go, the whole family goes. Everything fell into right full place. The way that I planned it and the way God planned it was completely different. So when you are, when you have epignosis, you will never, never curse God like I did when a door is closed. You will rejoice because you know that God is preparing a better way. You know that he is coming through for you. The way that you planned it is not the way that he plans it. He plans it in a grander way. You planned it with your understanding, but he plans it with the magnitude of supernatural grace that comes with it. The second one, that you may know what is the hope of your calling? You will know God's will upon your life. The best example of epignosis of knowing God's will is our daughter. When Jerusha was, had got a scholarship worth 16 or 17 million, we were, we were asking God, Lord, is this your will? Everything was open. We had very little to do. It was an open, open both doors were open that she could just go through. But we were always asking God, Lord, is this your perfect will? Because so much was at stake in the form of her walk with the Lord, her serving God, her calling, and it was something that was completely different from what she loved to do. And then all of a sudden, the prophet of God calls us up and says, this is not God's will. A person who was absolutely close to me, very close to me said, think about, this is such a great opportunity. Why are you letting it go? It's an opportunity to go abroad, to study in a university. Hey, everything is free. All these things. But when we know, when we have knowledge of God, immediately, when we know that it is not God's perfect will, we just drop it. And we have seen as the prophet said, that she will be a star here. We have seen how God has already done. Within two weeks of taking a coaching assignment to be sent on a Sri Lankan tour, a company 
being selected out of 6,000 applicants to a 60 course, 60 people course. That is just, we know that God is there. And when you have epignosis, you will not cry on things based on its value. Because we know that we have a God who can add value to everything in our life. So we must know the will of God. It also says, you will know the riches and the inheritance that you possess. I know that you all are not interested because you all don't want to get rich. Every heavenly blessing has been bestowed to us because of Christ. We must know it's just that we don't tap into it. We don't know what our potential is. We don't know everything you are trying to fathom with your little mind. Don't look at God through your mind. Look at him in his magnitude and his revelation of who he is in your life. Because if you try to understand your limiting God with your own mind, but when you understand him in his magnitude and what he has done, what he has done in your life, when I look back, I know that it is only God and God alone that created such an opportunity for me to complete my education in the UK. I know it was only God that saved me from a motorcycle accident, hitting a lorry that came head on. 350 stitches on my hand, protected me. He, when I was such a loser in life, still, he did that because he had a plan for me. But unless I came and I knew the knowledge of God and his plan, his purpose, his will, the riches that he has pro provided for me already kept ready that I have to tap in and take out. Unless I have the knowledge of it, it is just myth. That is why when we come to a platform and when we hear a prophet of God saying, God, will, that you are partakers of my grace, when he comes and says that, and when we know that God has taken him to a higher elevation, when he has blessed him beyond financial measures that we have, we can't say, ayo, make a me bisu boruak. It's not something that you're saying, this is just a myth. This is a fairy tale. No, this is what God has prepared and prepared for you as his children. It's just that if, if the prophet of God can tap into it, you have to also tap into it because not only are you equipped to do that, you are also partakers of his grace. Amen. So you must know what God has intended and purposed for you. Riches are yours. When he said that to be fruitful, he said you have to be rich. And if you don't want to get rich, please don't discourage others from being rich. Because I want to get rich. I am rich, but I want to get richer and richer. -er -er. <laughs> because I want to serve God. I don't want to be a burden to the ministry. I want to be a giver. I want to give it with all that I have. I want to build houses for people. I want to buy cars for people. And I want to impart God's blessing into other people's life. And unless he makes me a blessing, how can I be a conduit? First, I have to be blessed to be a blessing to others. So that I don't live by other people's giving, I live by my giving. So you must know that being rich, being prosperous is God's perfect will for you. Also, he enables us to have greatness of his power. That is one thing that all, most Christians don't know. The power that is vested in you as a child of the, of the God most time. One beautiful story that I read in the Bible is when Moses... When he went to, when he saw the Red Sea, the people were crying out and saying, why did you take us out? Why did you bring us out? They were mourning. Why did, weren't there enough graves back in Egypt? Why did you bring us so that we can die in the wilderness? Here, yeah, Moses is taking them out and he's saying to the people, God will protect you. God will fight. You hold your peace. And God is looking at him and saying, why are you telling me? I have equipped you. You rest the rod and tell the Red Sea to part. Moses is telling the people, God will fight your battle. 
God is telling Moses, you are the one who have the rod, extend it. I have given you power. It is up to you where they are going to enforce it. Because through the enforcing of that power, the Israelites walked on dry ground and it was on the same dry ground that his enemies were defeated. Amen. So you must know that we have been equipped. We have been equipped to overcome any situation, any circumstances. He has given us power over power. We cannot live a defeated life because of that. Because the power that rested in us enables us, empowers us, pushes us to go beyond what our human understanding can push us to. That is why we need to constantly be aware and know the, and have that knowledge of God to such an extent that he and us become one. That knowledge comes only when we are as one. So remember the word was weight, which was kava. Okay? Don't forget the word. The last thing that comes, so we, we know that our eyes of our understanding was enlightened. We know the will of God. We know that we have riches and inheritance that we, we must possess. We have greatness of power and we have dominion over principles. You must know that you are, when that is why an eagle, an eagle is not worried about the serpents that are on the ground. He is not worried about what is happening at a lower level. He is soaring at a high level. He is ascending and he is enjoying the benefits that is available for him. Do you think that the serpent is trying to go to the sky to fight him? No. And the eagle also doesn't come down to fight with the serpent. Because he knows what he has been called to. He has dominion over every other thing. He is the king of the sky and he rules that way. He is not affected by what is happening on the ground. Because he knows that his calling is higher. He is placed in higher locations. He is flying at a higher level. He is called to do higher things. He is given vision so that he can see. When he wants something, he goes, he gets it and comes back. He, that's it. There is absolutely no struggle. So you must know that principalities and dark forces are below our feet. And we have dominion over it. Don't let any devil, black, white, any color, they like, they cannot have dominion over you. They cannot have access into your life. They cannot come into your territory, into your house, into your, even, even to the vicinity where you are because they cannot reach that height. Because when you are soaring, you are in a different level. You are not going to encounter mountains. You are not going to encounter because the barriers that you face, you will face no more when you are soaring at higher levels. So like I told you, wait. Those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Cover. And it was binding together. In Genesis, man ate from the tree of knowledge. And he's Physical eyes were open. Corinthians 2, sorry, Colossians 2, verse number 3 says, In Jesus are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. In Jesus are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And today, in the new covenant, in John chapter 15, verse number 7, Jesus calls him the wine. He is the tree and we are the branches. In Genesis, it was a tree of knowledge that Adam and Eve ate and lost their spiritual life, spiritual sight. But today, Jesus, in John chapter 6, verse number 56, it says that he that eateth my flesh and drinketh my cup dwelleth in me and I in him. How we, in the new covenant, 
how we become partakers how we have greater knowledge of who god is and how we wait and we abide with him is when we are connected to him he is the vine we are the branches we eat of his fruit and we are one with him and only in that oneness can be consistently constantly and continually ascend spiritual dimensions so you must know that it is in christ and in the knowledge of being constantly he is the vine we are the branches we are drawing out of him in the new covenant and we are bearing fruit and without him we can do nothing without him we cannot do anything so after abiding him in him and receiving from him why is it important why is it not boring to be soaring why do you think it is not boring to be soaring the first thing is vigor when you are soaring it is not boring is because you become mature vigor is maturity active strength of body and mind it is strength it is efficacy it is potency when we have vigor you must know those who wait upon the lord shall renew their strength they will mount up with wings like eagles when we are connected to the vine we will have maturity we will be constantly feeding on what is coming from the vine and then the word vigor in the greek means kratos which is dominion a force of strength mighty with great power renewing strength so you must know that when we have maturity we have dominion and when we are constantly consistently ascending and soaring in heavenly places this is what happens to us we are more mature we are able to distinguish between god's ways god's ways are clear to us we know his thoughts and we become mature in the things of god the second thing that happens is that we have vision again vigor is what the eagle has that's why we are compared to him vision is also something that the eagle has something we when we are increasing and soaring continuously one thing that happens is vision increases eagles have excellent vision so do we when we are in higher level when you climb up to a higher building you have greater visibility when you are at a lower level you will have no visibility so it is important that you increase your visibility because when you increase in visibility you will be able to overcome any situation you will be able to analyze you will know lord is this your wish or no if it is not you keep away from it your vocabulary is the third v that happens see our vocabulary decreases when we ascend spiritual dimensions jesus been pray for hours when it came to sending a demon out he said go and he went the only time he said even at lazarus to me said because of these people lord you hear me when i call lazarus come out but i'm praying because others want to hear the prayer so you must know it is not our prayer but when we have a vocabulary which is anointed by the lord that comes through knowing him and the knowledge that comes the effort that we have to put is little your value increases significantly because eagles don't fly with crows eagles fly only with the, the eagles so the same is is manifested in us because when our vocabulary uh, when when our value increases you must know that we will not surround ourselves with normal nominal people you will only spend time with people who will add value to your life who will speak the same language who will understand situations the same way who will who will look at life in in the same way that you look at life do you think that the queen of england the prince uh, william or whoever it is they are they are thinking of how they get a housing loan do you think that they are worried about do they discuss with the, uh, with kate how they are going to get a, a, a lease on their vehicle 
it is not because people of that magnitude are dealing with don't deal with those little things so you must know when your value increases the way that you look at life how you address life how you deal with life situations become very much more you are not going to get upset by little things you know that the value that you bring into a room is greater than the influence that is there when you walk in before you walk in you add value you light up the place because the value increases your value increases and when your value increases people will come after you you don't have to go behind people because people will identify something special in you and then you will know that your value has increased last but not least victory when we know when we have greater knowledge of god one thing that will happen is there is always victory in our life Amen. see as a christian or as a child of god we cannot get sick Amen. we cannot get sick not that we will not be sick we cannot get sick so even if some kind of sickness comes into your life you have greater knowledge to know that that is not from the lord and that by his stripes that we have already received it so you know that you have already do have dominion over that situation you have already put it down because you cannot get sick you cannot be in poverty you cannot be depressed you cannot be oppressed you cannot live a life of just of little things when god has created you for greater things Amen. so you must know victory is yours victory is yours so you and i must know that soaring is never boring soaring is never boring